So, I built an ant weight. They say you shouldn't put an active weapon on your first robot, but I didn't just want to build another wedge. I wanted to make something at least a little different. So I decided to build Sit and Spinner, inspired by Blade Runner from the original series of BattleBots on Comedy Central. This is Stingray, my first full combat robot. For materials used, the chassis and tail are machined out of HDPE. The rear wedge is grade 5 titanium, and the spikes are sharpened steel taper pins. I also ended up having a TPU wedge printed with titanium plates designed for going against horizontal spinners. The electronics aren't really anything special with the exception of the drive. The robot's motors had to be especially strong but still light enough to give me weight for the tail. So I opted for Dartbox V2 motors from Just Cause Robotics. These are designed for beetle weights, so I knew they'd give my ant weight plenty of power. Pair that with foam wheels coated in latex for grip and the result was pretty zippy. But I don't want to spend too much time on the build process because I recently got to compete with this thing. Rumble in Redmond happened not too long ago and I had the opportunity to go. I got to meet some BattleBots builders while I was there, such as Kevin Molcheski of Claw Viper, Manuel Correo of Big Dill, and the event's main organizer, Rob Farrow of Warhawk. I also got to witness in person some robots I had seen on NHRO, like Not Dead Yet and NoobTube. But for me, the biggest thing was being able to actually compete in an event like this. My first match was against Flaming Falconeer, a vertical spinner similar in design to S3 from Robot Wars. As if having my first ever match against a big spinner didn't make my nerves bad enough, this was also the first match of the tournament, and my inexperience showed. Oh, by the way, if you'd like to see the full matches without commentary, I've made a video of that, and that should be in the description. Okay, so a bit of a pop to start. I try spinning, get a bit of a ram on him there. Another pop. Do the spin to win tactic. At this point, yeah, he gets a big hit on me here. Some more big hits. Everything's still working, though. Try to pin him here. Get a decent hit there. Uh, try and stuff his spinner with the spike, but uh, the spike comes off. So, seeing that, I tried to get some space, do some more spinning, and then uh, this happened. Oh, no, no. A big rookie mistake on my part, but at least it was a good fight up until then. The tail took some big hits, widening one of the mounting holes for the spikes, which is why it fell out. I did have a spare tail, but I decided to just drill a new hole in the old one and call it good. That being said, the spikes did get replaced. One tire was shredded, but the hub was fine, making for an easy fix. On the other hand, the washer to the other wheel was damaged such that it wouldn't come off, so I had to replace the whole hub. The chassis took a decent couple of hits, but didn't sustain any serious damage, so all in all it didn't take me too long to get ready for the loser's bracket. My next match was against What the Flip, a Viper kit with a lifter. Okay, a bit slow to start. Just do my spinny thing. Uh, here I'm trying to maybe get under him, throw him into the wall. It wasn't working. Try to hit him with my front spikes here and I get lifted for it. Uh, and then things go very wrong. <laughs> so at this point I'm just doing what I can to try and stay aggressive. Try and keep hitting him with the spikes. He never flips me but he does get some clamps on me. And uh, eats me alive. I was able to get away, of course. Uh, you can only pin for so long, but he got some more clamps on me. Some good lifts, but never flipped me over. I just tried to stay aggressive, tried to keep hitting him with the tail, and ultimately this did go to the judges. The reason the wheel came off is because I had ordered the wrong size bore for my spare hubs. I actually noticed this prior to the match, but I just tightened down the set screw and thought, eh, it'll be fine. Uh -oh. It wasn't fine. So with this unfortunate mistake, I knew I was out of the tournament. The judge's decision was officially announced and the winner was... Me? What? Yeah, 2-1 split decision in favor of Stingray. 
Gonna be honest, I'm not sure I deserved that win, but I'll take it. The guys from the other team were good sports about it too, so props to them. So the good news was that I was still in the tournament, but the bad news was I didn't have any spare hubs that were the right size. And this is where I have to give a huge thank you to the guy stationed next to me in the pits, because he happened to have a couple of spare hubs that were just the right size, and he just gave them to me. Thank you, Eric. I owe you one. With this, I put on the new hub, charged the batteries, and got ready for my next match. Next was Noob Wedge, partner in crime to the famous Noob Tube. Side note, I was chatting with Andrew earlier in the day, and it was such a blast getting to talk with him. I love the creativity of his robot, and I think it's awesome that he's getting his son involved in the sport. But now it was time to battle. Okay, so at this point the match just started. I was trying to do the, you know, spin tactic. It worked there, but as you'll see here, well, it gets a good uh, push on me here. But usually when I try it, uh, it just bounces up and over it, because, you know, being a wedge and all. So I got the idea to try and maybe out wedge the wedge, and uh, it actually kind of worked. So here he's by the pit. I tried to get him in, but after my first match I was overly cautious, maybe. I get a decent little push on him here, and here, and I think here, uh, yeah, right there is where the receiver dislodged because of damage from the previous match. And at this point I said, what the heck, went for it with the front spikes, and it actually got stuck in him for a second, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, and that was a win by KO, surprisingly. Another win. I have to say, I've never believed in beginner's luck before, but now I'm starting to change my mind. No damage either, so it was easy prep for the next fight. This would be against Calypso, another wedge bot, but one with hinged forks, making it much more difficult to get underneath. So going into this match, I was thinking about the previous fight and using a combination of tactics, whether that be the spin tactic, uh, using my wedge, or using my front spikes, just to mix things up, keep him on his toes. If one tactic didn't work, I would switch to another. So, like you can see ramming there. I tried spinning there, and it just went up and over him. Gonna be honest, this probably was not the most exciting match to watch if you were in the audience. But up to this point, it's pretty even. You know, no one really has the upper hand, I think. Decent hit there. Uh, and then this is where things change, I think. He got a pin on me and then flips me over. And at this point, I can still spin and use the spikes, but the wedge is useless, and just because the angle of the front uh, spikes, those aren't going to be very useful either. So all I can really do at this point is spin, which takes away a lot of my strategy. And gets a little, good little ram on me there. And I feel like he did the better job of controlling this match. I, like I said, I just did what I could to try and stay aggressive. But ultimately, it did go to the judges. By now, my beginner's luck had run out, as the judges voted unanimously for Calypso. A very deserved win for him, though. So now I was out of the tournament, but I'm pretty happy going 2-2 two two at my first event, even if I did get lucky with my wins. At this point, I stuck around to watch the rest of the tournament and started putting my stuff away, but then I heard there was going to be a rumble, and of course I had to get in on it. So my strategy, of course, just go to the middle, spin up, hit anything I can. And right here, right from the very first hit, one of my wheels locks up. So I wasn't too thrilled about that, but the rumble is just for fun anyway, and I wanted to, you know, stay in on the fun. I wanted to keep driving, so I just kind of hobbled around for the rest of the match, trying to hit what I could, trying to be involved at all. Sometimes it worked, sometimes not so much. I'm trying to spin around, hit something, meanwhile all the chaos is going on around me. I see that uh, long white robot on the side, and I think, hey, what if I stick the spike in the spinner? Because, you know, that, that can only go well, right?
Well, it tore the spike off, but also made a good hit, so I can't complain. This is still me just trying to get a piece of the action. So a little hit there from that orange robot, and another one. Nothing too major though. So. At Redmond, they had pinball rules, which is basically you can hit the Lexan to try and unstick your robot. And that's what happened uh, with that drum spinner. At this point, I get stuck on top of the orange robot with my one good wheel in the air. And the drum comes along, tries to get a little bit of the action. I get freed for half a second and then stick myself back up on there. And then we're all stuck for a second. And then the drum spinner frees itself, and I think it was the one that won, because I definitely ended up stuck. Taking apart the motor after the fight, it quickly became obvious as to why the lockup happened. Not only was the shaft bent, the axle for one of the planetary gears had broken off, with some of the teeth being torn off those gears too. The hit didn't seem big enough to cause that kind of damage though, so I'm assuming it occurred in my first match and just didn't come to light until the rumble. Thankfully, just cause robotics sells both shaft and gear replacements, so I didn't need to buy a whole new motor to fix this. As for the spike, it was hit so hard that it was pulled sideways through the plastic, though granted there wasn't much material there to begin with. Being able to participate in an event like this is something I've wanted to do since I was a little kid and I'm grateful I got the chance to be a part of this competition. With that said, I'm not planning on stopping anytime soon. I'll get Stingray fixed up and ready to go in no time, and I'm already working on improvements. Granted, the robot will largely stay the same, but I do have some upgrades planned, mainly a tail that actually works as a wedge both ways up. More info to come on that, so stay tuned, and thank you for watching.